In this lesson, we will be speaking about the area rule. So we know that in a, tri in a triangle, if you know the height of the triangle and you know the length of the base, then you can use this formula over here, half base times height. You've maybe seen this formula before. However, sometimes you don't have the height or maybe you don't have the base, but maybe they gave you some type of angle. Then you can use the area rule of trigonometry, which is half, a, B, sin, C. So how does this work? Well, all that I need you to know is if you have a triangle, let's quickly go draw a triangle. And let's say you have some type of angle, okay? So let's say this angle over here. All that you need after that is the two sides next to the angle. So here's the angle. So you need the two sides next to that angle. So that would be this side and that would be this side. And that could be like your A and your B. And then you would just go ahead and use this formula. So let me show you how it works with an example. So here we have a triangle, and here we've got this angle, 134. So the area rule says half A, B, sin C. We said that this part is the angle, okay? And then the A and the B are the two sides next to that angle. So it's the 10 and the 11. So you could say half, 10, and 11. It doesn't matter which one's first. It doesn't matter if you say 11 first or 10 first, and then you're just gonna say sin of 134. Then that's it. You literally go type that in on the calculator. And if you round to two decimal places, you should get 39.56. Here's the next one. So really easy. We know that the formula is half A, B, sin C, so the angle is 81, so that goes over there, and then the two sides next to the angle would be those. You wouldn't use this one over here because that is not next to the 81. So then you could say half, 13, 12, it doesn't matter if you say 12 and then 13, and then sin of 81. Type that all on the calculator, round to two decimal places, and you should get 77.04. The next example is interesting because, let me just quickly show you the next example, because what you would find is that we have an angle, okay, but we don't have the two sides next to that angle, see? So we have a little bit of a problem, but what we will do now is we will realize that this is not a 90 degree triangle, so you cannot use Sokotoa to help you with this question, so Sokotoa is not gonna work. So we can either use, number one, we could use the sine rule, which we've learned about in previous lessons, or we could l try to use the cos rule. I always try to use the sine rule first. Um, so the sine rule goes A over sin A equals to B over sin B. And what we said was that it's all about finding opposites. So these two are opposites each other. And then we already have this four. What is that opposite? Well, that's opposite this angle. So if you haven't watched the video on the sine rule, then obviously what I'm saying right now is probably doesn't make that much sense. So first go watch the sine rule if that's you. So because, okay, so opposite of this four is this H over here. So this means we can try to work out what this H would be. So remember, with the sine rule, the, these small letters at the top, these are the sides, okay? So these are the sides, and then the capital letters, the A and the B, those are the angles. So we could say something like um, eight over sin 108. You see what I did there? I took the side as eight, and the angle is 108. And then I can make that equal to um, four over the sin, of h. Okay, now I would use cross multiplication, so I would multiply this up here, and I would multiply this up here, and so we would end up with 8 sin h equals to 4 sin 108. Now the goal is to eventually get h by itself. So what I would do next is I would divide by 8. So you'd end up with sin h equals to 4 sin 108 over 8. And then 
go type that in on the calculator and sin h would then be equal to now don't round off because that's not our final answer 0 0.4755282581 then to get h by itself the angle you would have to say shift sin or inverse sin or second function sin however your teacher explains that and if you had to go work this out you should get 28 comma 39 degrees okay so that's angle h 28 comma 39 degrees now for those of you that have watched my video on the sine rule you might remember that this triangle might have another answer you know the whole 180 minus thing so well done if you did remember that I'm not going to go through that part right now, but I can assure you that this is the only answer. There is not another answer. If what I have just said didn't make sense, don't worry. It's not that important for this lesson. So let's carry on. So now we have this angle. Now, the reason that that's really cool or good is that we could then use the sum of the angles in a triangle to help us to find the value of K because we know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. You'll see why we're doing that soon. So angle K is going to be 180 minus 108 minus 28.39. And that's going to give 43.61. So let's go fill that in, 43.61. Now, the reason that this is really good is that we know that the sine, I mean, the area rule, which is equal to a half AB sin c we said that the c is the angle now we have all three angles so how do we know which one to use well we said that c is the angle right so if you have a triangle like this if c is the angle then the two sides next to the angle are the a and the b so which angle do you think would be the most easy or most appropriate for us to use well well done if you say it's this one because if we use this one, then we, all, we also know what the two sides are, 4 and 8. The two sides that are next to the angle. If you use this one, that won't work because you don't know what this side is. And if you had to use this one, then you, you don't know what this side is. So the only angle that would work is this one because then you know what the two sides next to the angle will be. So we can then say half. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Kevin, what if I used a little other method? What if I used like a different method and I, I was somehow able to find this side over here? Could I then use a different angle? And the answer is yes. You can use any angle as long as the two sides next to the angle, as long as you have those sides, then it's fine. You will get to the same answer. This is the beauty of maths. So we're going to say half times four times eight times the sin of 43 0.61 and if you go calculate this you end up with 11.04 um, and you could say units squared because it's area um, but yeah that's pretty straightforward here's our next one so what we see here is we've got this angle 132 but we don't know this side and we don't know the side so that's not going to work for the area rule then we could try this one but we don't know this side we could maybe try find this angle. But what you should realize is that we don't have a lot of information in this triangle. So we're going to have to use the sin rule or the cos rule to try help us find a little bit more information. Okay, so I always like to start with the sin rule. So I know that that's all about opposites. So I know that this angle is opposite this side. So they go together. So this one and this one. So I can go full this in. 11 over sin 132 equals to, um, now the next piece of information is we could use this angle and the side opposite that one would be this one over here. Okay, so we could say BC, BC over the sin of 21. I would then use cross multiplication. Well, actually, I'm not going to use cross multiplication. I mean, it depends on how well you understand this. I don't need to multiply this one over there. 
I can just use cross multiplication of this one to this side, okay? If that confuses you, just use cross multiplication. You will eventually get to the same answer. But this is what we would end up with over there on the left-hand side. And on the bottom, you would still have this. And over here, you'd still have BC. If that part confuses you, then just use your normal cross multiplication. And then you'd probably have to do some type of division and you would eventually get to the same part. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type all of this on my calculator now. And I'm not gonna round off because this is not our final answer. So I'm gonna keep like five decimals, I mean four decimals. So this would be 5.3045. Okay, so we now have that side. Let's see, does that help us? Well, yes, because you see, now we have this side and we also have this side. So if we can just find this angle, then we can use the area rule because the area rule tells us if you know the angle and you know the two sides next to the angle, then that is perfect. So what we need to do now is just go find this angle over here. So the way we can do that is just by re remembering that the inside angles of a triangle add up to 180. So you could say 180, subtract 132, subtract 21. And if you calculate this, you end up with 27. So now we can use the area rule. So let's just go fill in the 27 over here. So the area rule is a half A, B, C, and C. Remember once again that if this is your angle C, then the A and the B are the two sides next to. So we could say half, um, and then A would be, um, so here we've got the 11 and the 5.3045. It doesn't matter which one you choose first, then 11, and then sin of 27. And so if you had to go calculate all of this, you end up with 13,2. Five, if you had to round to two decimal places.